painting friends. Today I'm starting a new series at Emily Designs on acrylic painting. I know a lot of you would like to start painting and you don't know where to start. Well today I'm going to teach you how to paint a simple and cute penguin. The supplies that we're going to need are paints of course. I've got acrylic paint. This is an inexpensive beginner's grade. It is white, titanium white, but any of the whites would do. And I've also got a black and an ultramarine blue. Any dark blue or black would work for this painting. So whichever blue and black you have, you can use. I also have a paintbrush. You want a thicker one that's flat, but about the size of your finger. We're gonna use that to brush the big chunks of color on. Then I would like you to also have a smaller brush. This is the one I used in this painting video. It's a little flat and it's just a little wide so you can do some corners to do little details or you can use it to paint like that to do a little thicker lines. This one worked really well. I also had one that goes to a point if you'd like to use that kind of brush to do some small details. We like that kind too. The other thing you'll need is a painting palette. This is the one I use for acrylics. I've actually got two here. I like these kinds with the little divots in there to hold your paint. Also, you'll need paper towels to clean up any messes that you might make or to clean your brushes. I make a lot of messes, so I've got a few of these around. And I almost forgot. We're gonna need a canvas. I'm using this kind. It's an eight by 10 stretched canvas over a wood frame. These are very inexpensive that you can buy at your art stores. Well, let's get started. That is all that we need. Here we go. The first thing I'm going to do is mix my paints. I have a little blue here from earlier when I painted this, but I'm going to get a little extra blue, my ultramarine blue, put it on the palette, I'm going to hold it up so you can see, just a little bit, you think you need a lot, but just a little dollop will work, and we'll need a little bit of white, so make sure you put your caps back on your acrylics because they dry really fast and you don't want it to dry up in there. I'm going to get a little dollop of white. Our painting, as you can see, has a lot more white in it than blue. This actually is not a very dark blue right there, so a lot of that's mixed with white. So get a little extra white and just a little bit of blue, and that's how we're going to start. So get your paintbrush wet. I'm using the, the bigger one. And I want to mix my, here, just squeeze some of that water back off. You don't want it to be dripping. There we go. Just a little wet. And then we're going to mix the blue. I already dabbed a little bit of blue. And mix it just with the side of the white. Don't stir it up like soup. Just put it, a little blue on, on the side. And you scrape a little of the white into it. And then you stir it up on the side right next to it. There we go. That's pretty close to the sky color. We've got a nice light blue. I actually want to get it a little bit darker. So I'm going to take just a little corner of blue. Not a lot. You can see just a little bit. Put it in the spot we're mixing. And you can do this on a flat palette. I just like the palette that has the little divots in it to hold my paint better. There we go, that is a nice, nice light, medium blue. We're going to start, you can see my horizon is about a third of the way from the bottom. So you got one third, two thirds, three thirds. So about right here, not right in the middle, but right about there is going to be my horizon. So I'm just going to draw a big old light blue line across my painting. There we go, we've started. 
Now this is one of the easiest parts of the painting. I want you to paint this whole section that light blue color. So just go to town. And you see how the paint goes a long way. We're starting to get a little drier right there. So then at this point what I do, you can wipe it on the side because your paint actually goes deep into the brush. So I kind of wipe it like that. And if you get a blue smudge like that, that's okay because we're going to blend it, blend it, blend it, blend it. You can't really go wrong with this. Then my paintbrush is getting dry, so I'm going to dip it in a little water. I dipped it about halfway up, scrape a little of that off so it's not dripping so bad. Then we're going to go back in to this medium blue that we found that we created just now. And I'm going to do left side, right side. I like to get the paint on both sides, if you can see that. And then we're just going to keep going. So this way, this way, you can go fast. Just not so fast that you're flinging paint at your neighbor. <laughs> you want to be careful around the edges because the paint does flick off like that if you're too fast. So keep your brush flat and just keep going like this. Up to the edges. I'm going to need some more paint. So I'm going to get a little water, get a little of my light blue. Whoops, I dripped down. That is what our paper towels are for. My paintbrush was too wet just now. I'm going to get one of my paper towels out and wipe that up because I don't want a soupy mess on my painting. There we go. And this part is okay if it's a little bit messy. Now to get the darker colors along the top, I'm going to take just a little bit of my blue, just straight dark blue, and put a little in this corner, put a little in that corner, and just drag it along the top. Give it a nice deep color on the top. And then we're going to blend it down the edges, like that. Blend it down this edge. This is called a vignette, which is not important to know, but if it's dark around the edges, you call it a vignette. There we go. And right here, we're just mainly blending, because your sky, you don't want it to... There we go. You want it basically the same color across the whole sky. Now in my original, I've got it even darker, and I kind of like that, so I'm going to go in with some more blue, and just give it some more blue. You can make it as blue as you want. There we go. And when your sky looks about as blue as you like it, then we're going to leave it alone so it can dry a little bit, so we can paint that penguin on the top. Now the way you make it look a little smoother like I'm doing is you just go across the whole thing. Just keep going across. My brush is pretty dry at this point, so I'm not putting extra paint gloves on there. I'm just wiping it across to smooth it out so you don't have these chunky brush strokes like that, because that doesn't look like sky. You just want to push it out. Smooth it out like that, all the way up to the top. Smooth all of that stuff out. That's pretty good. Then we're going to clean our brush for the first time really good. Just tap it on the bottom or on the side. In your clean water, stir it around a bit. And then squeeze the water off on the edge, if you can see that. And then it looks pretty clean. I want to wipe it on the paper towel and get it the last little bit clean. Let's see if it's pretty clean. Yeah, that's pretty clean. So now I'm going to paint the snow on the bottom. So I'm going to get just a little bit of water, not a lot. I'm going to wipe some of that off. And then I'm going to go in and get some of that light blue and some white. 
So I'm mixing it in deeper into the white here. You can see that? Because I just want more white. I want to have a little bit of color in the smell, but mainly white. And we're just going to swipe that across the whole bottom area. And if you've made a drip like that, this is when we get to cover that up a little bit. Go along your horizon. taking some basically straight white. I've got quite a bit of paint there. I'm going to paint a really nice horizon. I like a nice strong white line at the top. Then we're going to blend that, blend that. And I'm sorry if you can hear my dogs barking. They are out in the yard. I can hear them. <laughs> okay, so now we've got our sky and we've got our snow. And in my original painting, I painted a few little shadows on the snow to give it a little texture. So here, I'm just going to take a tiny, tiny little bit of blue. My paint paper still has the white paint on it from earlier because I didn't wash it off yet. And I just dabbed a little bit of blue on there. I'm going to get put a few blue rainbow shapes on the ground like this. Smaller ones in the back. Bigger ones on the front. I'm already running out of blue because I only got a little bit. And then we just blend that in. Push it around. Blend it out a little bit. Smooth it out. And snow can be all kinds of different bumps. So you can't really do this wrong either. You can have big bumps or small bumps. I'm going to go in and get a little bit extra blue. Just a tiny little bit. Whoops, ding. And I'm going to put a couple more bigger shadows over here. Just little rainbow shapes. Smaller ones in the back. Bigger ones in the front. And then we just blend it. Blend it out. There we go. So that's not too hard. And you've got a little bit of texture in there. There we go. I think I might want a little bit more blue. So I'm going to get just a little bit more and give it... On one side of my rainbows, I'm going to give it a little bit darker so it looks like the sun is coming and we have some shadows over on this side. So where I paint my little rainbows, I'm just going to give it an extra shadows on some of those. And then I just blend it out. If you blend it too much, it'll turn back into the same light blue color. So at this point, if you don't like it, just erase your snow and put more bumps in. But I think this is not too bad. That looks like snow to me. I'm going to put just a tiny bit more blue, just a tiny little bit. And I'm going to give it a little bit of a shadow in this corner. Just like that. There we go, if you can see that. Lift my canvas up a bit. Just a really light blue shadow, and then along the bottom, that'll kind of frame the picture better. So it, there we go. I'm gonna put just a little extra blue over in this corner, and then you just blend it out. Right now our paint is still pretty wet, so it blends pretty easily. Okay. So just blend out your bumps. There you go. Now at this point, I think my sky, let's see, it's starting to dry, so I think we can put the clouds in it. I'm going to just wipe my brush off. It's still got a lot of blue stuff to it, so I'm going to clean it off a bit more. Wash it off, squeeze that water off. There we go. It looks pretty clean now. I'm going to go in and just pick up some white. Without water, I just want a pretty dry brush to paint clouds. I'm going to dry it off just a little bit extra. See, when it's dry, you can see more of the bristles. When it's wet, it usually sticks together and you get a stronger, thicker shape. But when it's dry, 
we can make those poofy clouds easier. So it's pretty dry right there. I'm just going to go in and don't scoop up a big glob, just tap it. Just tap it a little, get a little, well, that's not what you want to do. Scrape that off. You just want a little bit of white. Just a little bit. And I'm going to start with the tops of the clouds. I'm going to do some shapes. Clouds are bumpy on their tops. So let's give it some bumps. How about three bumps on the top? Kind of like our rainbows on the bottom, but this is just clouds. There we go. I'm going to get a little bit more white. I'm going to put a cloud over. How about up here so it's above where the penguin is? Or will be. See, I got a lot more white there. This is going to be a heavier cloud. Let's do three bumps there too, maybe four. We'll put another bump here. I'm going to add a little more white to this cloud so they are the same color. There we go. Now I'm going to blend them down. So what you do is just in little circles, you just go around. Don't go above the top of your cloud just yet. We're just blending in their bottoms. There we go. I'm going to blend this one in because you don't want those heavy lines. That doesn't look like a cloud just yet. I want to blend it in a little bit. And if you want more bumps, you can just add a little bit extra. If you say, that doesn't quite look like a cloud to me, I might add just a little extra bump in there. Or whatever you want to do. This is your painting. Now you can see my sky was still a little bit wet, so we're picking up some of the blue in the clouds. But that's okay because clouds have a variety of colors in them, and the bottoms are usually a little bit darker anyway. That looks pretty good. Now, in this painting, you can see I've kind of whisked the clouds up a little, so I'm going to take my brush. It's still pretty dry. I haven't dipped it in the water in a while. I'm going to whisk my clouds. I'm just going to kind of push them up a little bit. And this paint is drying really fast now, so you don't really get too much of a whisk. I think that looks pretty nice. Just push them around a little bit until they look like clouds to you. That one's not quite as wispy. We get just a tad. Kind of put a little extra white in there. Those aren't too bad. I think those look like pretty good clouds. Now in this one, I added some extra clouds lower if you want. So you just take a little bit of paint. And the lower clouds are actually the ones that are farther away. So you want to make them a little bit smaller. So you can just do little lines like that. Make them a little bumpy on the top. There we go. Blend them out a little bit. You can't go wrong with clouds either because they come in all shapes. So everyone's painting is going to look a little different and they're all going to be really good. I kind of like that. I think that looks like a nice winter sky. You always get the wispy clouds in the winter time. So now we're going to do the fun part. We're going to add the penguin. Okay friends, I moved my camera a little bit because I want you to really see this and I didn't want to block the penguin. So let's start with our penguin now. I think I'm going to use my smaller brush. Okay, so I'm going to take my bigger brush I've got it just sitting here in the water making a mess. So I'm going to clean it off, dry it off with my paper towel and just, yeah, it looks good. I'm just going to lay it down out of my way because I don't know if I'm going to use it again. I'm going to take my small brush. This one, you can see the size compared to my finger, my thumb, here's my finger. You can see it's quite a bit smaller and I like this one for doing some detailed stuff. So the fun thing about a penguin is it looks a little bit like a snowman. 
But first, I forgot we have to stir our gray. So let's get a little bit of water on our brush. And right next to my dollop of black, I'm just going to put a little black over here. I'm going to scoop up some of my white from the edge. If you scoop it up from the middle, you see I left some black there. If you scoop it up at the middle, then you'll have mixed all your white with the black. Here we go. Stir up some white and some black right here. into a nice medium penguin gray. Now this brush is a lot smaller so it holds less paint. So I often have quite a bit of paint on a small brush if I'm going to be painting a bigger shape like this. So I'm going to start by deciding where I want his feet. I think probably right in the middle of the snow. Now, I've got my penguin over to the side because I thought that looked pretty nice. But you can put your penguin in the middle. You can put him over on the other side if you want, wherever you want to put your penguin. I'm going to put mine right here. So I'm just going to do some small, maybe fingerprint-sized blobs for his feet. You've got one. Leave a nice space and draw his other foot. That'll tell us where this penguin's going to be. We'll add a little bit of detail to these feet later. Okay, so then we're going to start our penguins. They'll get a little more gray. And we're going to start by connecting these little feet. He's got a little fluffy bit right there. And then we're going to draw basically a big circle. So we're going to go up this way. And penguins are really fluffy, so don't worry if your brush looks a little crazy like mine is right there, because we're going to add the poofy feathers later to cover up some of this crazy stuff. I'm going to get a little more water. It feels like my brush is too dry, just a little bit. And then I'm going to take a little bit gray, a little bit more gray, and draw his other side. So remember, we're doing basically a circle, but I wasn't going to draw the top of the circle because that's where we're going to keep drawing the penguin higher. So let's pretend this is a circle. We've got his two feet. We go up. We skip a little bit. And we go back down. There we go. Right. Do that. That looks basically like the bottom of a penguin. So now I'm going to get a little bit more water, a little bit more gray. And the next part of the penguin is like the middle part of the snowman. So it's going to be basically a smaller circle. So right about here, we're going to draw a medium-sized circle. So let's pretend we drew the bottom. So it goes this way, and then on the side it goes up. And I'm going to skip that part too, because that's where I'm going to put his head. So I'm just drawing up. I'm going to pretend the circle goes this way, and then right about here, I'm going to draw the rest of that medium-sized circle. There we go. Now that is looking like a pretty good penguin shape. Now the last top of the penguin is like the top of the snowman. So it's another circle, and this one's even smaller. So I'm going to draw, just right here, a nice small circle. I'm going to start with the top of his head and come down this way. And on this side, this is where his beak is going to go. And his beak is actually black. So I'm going to take just a tiny little bit of black on my brush. There we go. And I'm going to draw in a triangle beak. So right here, my painting's dry, so I'm going to put my hand on it. So right at the side of your penguin's face, you're going to draw a triangle. So like this, and like that, you've got, well, kind of a flat triangle. If it's too wide, his beak would look more like a little bird, probably. And then, the other side of the penguin's beak actually ends up looking kind of like a diamond. So we just drew this shape, and we're going to draw 
basically the same shape over here, like that and like that. So it's like a little squashed diamond. I'm going to get a little more black and color this in. I still got a little gray on my brush, but that's okay. There we go. Now that looks pretty good, like a beak. Now we're going to color in the top of the penguin's head. So we get a little black. And we want to color starting from his beak, right at the tip right here, where his beak meets his head. We're going to go up. And at this point, you want to stay in the lines that we made. We're going to go around. So let's go up. Make a really thick line out of the black. Then we're going to go around this way. I'm trying to keep my hand out of the way so you can see what I'm doing so it looks a little awkward. <laughs> you can hold your hand however you want. So we're going to do all the way up to the edge of the penguin with black and then a really thick line like this all the way down to about there where it meets his neck. So color all of that black because on the baby penguin all of that is black. And then he actually has a little bit, almost like a chin strap. He has a little bit of a shadow that goes under there. Not too bad. Now, I'm going to draw on his wing. I'm going to get a little water because my paintbrush is getting a little dry a little bit more black. Now his wing actually starts around up by his neck. I'm going to show you this penguin. You see his wing starts up here. And it's kind of a raindrop shape. So it goes all the way through the first, I mean the middle part of the snowman, halfway down the big part of the snowman. So if you've got your three snowman balls like that, then you can see that it's a raindrop shape that goes just down that way, almost to his foot. So I'm going to use my black so we can really see where we're drawing that. I'm going to start over on the edge and just come down, 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 almost to his foot. His hand, I mean his wing, doesn't actually touch his foot. So just give it a nice round shape on this side. And then I'm going to get a little more paint, and I'm going to draw the other side of his wing. I'm going to come more to a point, I think, and then we're going to go up this way. And right there, you see, I just went outside of my circles, because I want his wing to look symmetrical. There we go. That's a pretty good wing. Now let's draw his other wing. Now this is where it gets a little bit tricky because his other wing, he, since he's standing on his side, it's actually behind his back a little bit. So I'm going to start coming out of the middle of the top of his body right here instead of starting at the top because you don't want him to look like he's got his shoulder wrapped around like that. So right about here, I'm going to just draw a rounded shape same length as his other arm, and then I'm going to cut across his body like that. That's not too bad. It's about where I'm going to put his wings. You can see that's about where I put them on this one. So now comes the fun part. I'm going to clean the black off my brush because I don't want him to be too dark. Most baby penguins are a light gray color. So I'm going to take some of my gray. I didn't mix enough, so I'm going to get a little more white, a little more black, and just mix a nice medium gray color. Put a little water in it to thin it down if you want. You can see it's a nice texture now for painting. And I'm just going to paint this bottom section here, so it's all a nice medium gray. We 
actually can paint probably his all the way up to his neck. It's all about the same color. And you see, I'm starting to grab the black a little bit because it's not dry. So I can blend that in if you want to learn about blending. Just blend it a little bit like that. And it makes it look kind of like a shadow. But before my penguin dries, I'm going to paint this bottom section, fill it all up with the gray. Until you can't see through it anymore. So we're covering up that part of the sky that we made. And then I'm going to paint his wing. I'm going to start at the top and just blend it down. We actually don't want a harsh black line because that's not really realistic. So I'm going to blend that black line out with my gray paint. This side is where the shadow is going to be. So I'm going to leave a lot of the black there so you can see the shadow under his arm. And then I'm going to paint his other wing. And come out here and paint the same gray almost up to the edge. Blend that black out a bit, just smudge it together. And we're still going to fix the penguin a bit, so don't worry. If it's not quite the right color, we're still working on adding some highlights. Okay, he's starting to look like a penguin. Next, I am going to add some texture to this penguin. I'm going to add some more shadows. That's a good thing to start with. So with a little black, let's make him look like his belly is a bit fatter right here because he's so poofy. Add some black. That'll give him some depth. Add a little black just around the bottom of his wing here to give him a little bit more of a shadow. And underneath his body would be a shadow, too. So just around the edges. And right here, I'm making these look more like feathers. So I'm not blending it in and as much. These can be just nice paint strokes. Now another place, get a little more black. Another place he'd have a shadow is right under his chin. So right here, I'm going to put pretty good size black shadow. I'm just going to fill in some of this with black. All the way up to just a little bit right under his chin. And I'm going to blend out right here. It looks a little funny. I'll we'll blend that out a bit. There we go. Now, I'm going to clean that brush up. my white. And I got a lot of white. We're going to paint around his beak. You need enough white to cover up that blue because a penguin's face is basically straight white color. Nothing mixed into it. Now my paint is still wet around so be careful not to grab too much of the black because you don't want to darken this this area right here. So just carefully paint until you've covered up all the blue and I think actually all the way up to his the edge of his face right there. That's not too bad. Now when we have extra white on our brushes let's add some highlights. Like right here he's going to have some white feathers just poofing out right 
give it some paint strokes. And let's add some more white to his, his little arm right here. Now you can see I, my white is starting to mix with my gray. So it's blending out nicely. I'm going to get some more white because I want a really strong highlight over here. When you paint the really light colors, it's called highlights. The dark colors are called shadows. I'm actually going to paint right, not over the black line, but right next to it. That will really make his wing pop out. And then you can blend it in. Or leave it chunky if you want, because it's feathers, so it's not, it's going to look good either way. I'm going to add more white to his back. Just blend it out like some feathers. I'm going to give him more white on his front. And some white just poofing up right here. This is a good place for some highlights. And his other, his other wing right here. Now I know I'm adding these white highlights pretty fast. So if you need to pause your video right now, you can do that. But just add your white highlights wherever you feel like the sun would hit or where he would have some white poofy feathers. That's looking pretty close to my original penguin. This guy looks a little fluffier. I think I'm actually painting this one a little smoother. So now I'm going to add just some tufts of feathers around the edge to make it look a little more realistic. And we'll add right here to make that blend out a little better. So we just take our brush. It's got a probably just a mix of everything on it right now. And that's okay because I'm actually blending the white to the black. So we want to pull the white feathers out just like that all around the edges. Just grab up just the edge of the white and pull it out the way that you think the feathers would grow. You don't want to just go straight up because his feathers aren't actually growing that way. His feathers are probably growing back this way. And then when you get to the bottom of his chin, his feathers are growing down. So just pull those down a little bit. My brush is getting a little too dark. I picked up way too much of that black and gray, so I'm going to wipe it off. Clean it off, wipe it off, and see if I can get more of the white. There we go. Hello, painting friends. I had some technical difficulties earlier, and I missed part of the painting. Just the last part, so I wanted to go through and show you what I did. We were just at the point where I was pushing these white feathers out to make the penguin really fluffy. And then what I did next is I pushed the gray feathers out of this side of the penguin. So you just grab a little of your gray paint and you just push it out like that. And if your, your penguin has dried and you can't really push those feathers out to make it fluffy, what you can do is take a little bit of your gray and just draw little feathers on the side of him. And what I did is I went starting from about here because his head isn't going to be that poofy. So right about here I just pushed all these feathers out all around the penguin and then right there and a little bit on this side. However fluffy you want your penguin just draw those little feathers on there. Then the next step I took just by straight black paint, not the gray. I just took some black, a little tiny bit. And with the corner of my brush, I made a nice almond shape for his eye. And then I went down and just drew oval shapes for his feet and colored those in with the same black. Then, after that dried just a tiny bit, I went and got some white, just a plain white. 
And with the corner of my flat brush, I just put a little dot right in his eye. That makes it shine just a little bit. It brightens up that eye. And then I drew three claws or toes on each foot with the white. And you can see it mixed with the black a little, and that's okay because that gives it a little bit of a dimension. So I just drew three claws on each foot. And then, I don't remember if this part was in the video, but we put a little dot for his nose, a little smile on his, his beak, and then just a little highlight right there on the end of his beak. And that's when I started filming again, so we'll be right back. Okay, so the last part, we're going to give this penguin a nice shadow. And I'm going to use my blue. So just go back to that dark blue, put a little bit on your paintbrush. And his shadow's going to go this way, kind of up because it looks like the sun is coming this way. So we're going to start about where his feet are and go out and then just start going up a little bit like that. And then almost where his, his little flipper comes, just a little bit below that, we're going to draw up to meet that and then fill this area in with this blue. Just blend that out. I'm going to need some more. That's about his shadow, but that looks like a silly shape. And we want it to look more like a shadow, so I'm going to get this. Just dry it off, because a dry brush can blend a lot better. And we're going to just blend it into the white. Kind of sideways strokes like this because your shadow isn't going to look like that in real life. It's going to blend kind of this way. So back and forth along the edges, just blend that out. Blend, blend, blend. But don't erase the feet that you just drew. So be careful when you get back to the penguin. But just blend this out. Look like a shadow. Oh, not too bad. Okay, so I'm going to go back in with some black and try to fix the eye because it wasn't quite dark enough. It looked a little cloudy. There we go. A nice almond shape. Just black like that. That looks pretty good. I'm going to take that highlight out. I actually didn't like that. There we go. I think he looks better with just black feathers on his head. That's not too bad. Now the last thing, you just finished a real painting and you need to sign it. Ben. Okay, this is Malachi. He's coming in to see. You talk. Not just yet. This, oh, excuse you. This is the corner right here. You're going to sign your first, or maybe not your first, painting. My name is Emily. 